-hmm. They're having $500 a month. No, somebody's going to say there's a variety of other ways yeah, that you can yeah. tackle it as well. You could potentially get a second mortgage through a hard money lender. You may stop the contributions to your 401k. Now, that pains me to say it if there's a match. What's up, hustlers? It's JT Automations, your favorite country cousin, back again with another video with Mr. William Thompson. We are continuing our series, which is called Faith and Financing, Faith and Finances for the faith-based entrepreneurs, whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur. Hold on, wait. I'm going to get you back to today's action, but I have a secret that I want to share with you. Do you know above all else when they did the research, the number one reason why the rich continue to get richer is due to real estate ownership. However, many of us believe that we have to have good credit, a lot of money, or else we got to start cold calling strangers and get into wholesaling. What if I told you that you can buy real estate cash for $1,000 or less or get paid just for trying, even if you're unsuccessful? Well, there's a book that I have out. You see a picture of it now on the screen and it's linked down in the description below. So if you want to know how to buy real estate cash with $1,000 or less or get paid just for trying, I link that down in the description below for your convenience. But now back to today's action or a current entrepreneur in the space already. Now, we're gonna start dissecting you guys' personal financial problems. A challenge was issued that if we can't help you solve your personal financial problems, we'll give you $1,000. Now, we're not saying it's gonna be easy, right. like you can just lay in the bed and it magically solves itself, right? You're gonna to have to do work. You did something to get in to that position. Right. You're gonna to have to do something to get out of that position, but we're here to give you the right answer to help you get out of that situation and to the next level. So, um, I got some notes here because I'm not gonna memorize all of the comments you guys have, and we'll split this up across several videos for the sake of time. Um, first scenario that I have for you okay. is, Somebody out there, and just out of respect, you know, no names will be given. Okay. But they have overwhelming debt. Gotcha. A limited income. With you. Few assets. Okay. They need a straightforward uh, resolution to better their financial situation. I got you. Okay. Got you. Okay. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. The first thing I want to say is three general things for everyone. First of all, people have to stop looking at what they don't have. That's okay. the first thing. You have to stop looking at what you don't have but you have to start looking at what you do have. In other words, you have to find what you do have. No. Everybody has something, okay? Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, you have to keep in mind a team. Sometimes, see, I believe this, one is too small of a number for greatness, and mm -hmm. sometimes you gotta bring a team in and you have to harvest ideas, okay? Mm -hmm. And then third of all, you have to find your pots of oil, so keep that in mind, all right? So this scenario here, this person has excessive debt, yep. okay? The first thing I would recommend doing, it may sound bad, is I would start by talking to my creditors, number one, about negotiating a lower balance. Because remember, you have not because you ask not. I would look at one asking for a lower balance and or a deferment of the payment until the future, e.g. maybe when I get my taxes, a new job. And if they will not work with me, you simply, if it's not something that you're gonna lose, let's say if it's credit cards or finance companies, something that you're not gonna lose, you may just have to stop paying it. Now mm -hmm. remember, I, we believe in paying your debt, mm -hmm. but I've talked to my creditor, they would not lower the rate. They mm -hmm. would not reduce the payment. They would not defer. And I've told them my situation, so my best obligation is going to be to potentially stop paying. Now, every state is a little different. Some can garnish your wa work wages, other can't. So it's imperative that you even consult with a, a, a debt consolidation attorney. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. The second thing, I would go back to my job. This person has limited income. Limited income. Okay? Yeah. Now, when we talk about your job, people only see the job for the paycheck. Mm -hmm. But there are about eight different ways I teach people how to get money from their job. Number one, I would talk to my tax professional and I would look at stop having any of my taxes taken out, my federal and state tax. Now again, mm -hmm. talk to your tax person because the way the tax laws are set up, as long as you have all your tax money in by December 31st, they could care less whether you had it equally from January through December or all back ended. Mm -hmm. The average person just making, let's say 40,000 a year, uh, a year, mm -hmm. they're having $500 a month in federal and state taxes taken out. Mm -hmm. 
So I would encourage them until I had a better game plan. I would simply talk to my tax person and have my taxes stop. You just picked up $500. Now that could be the refund you were planning on getting mm -hmm. and or it could put you into an O in the IRS. But we're talking about a desperate situation with some short term solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just a few more on your jobs and there are many more. Also on my job, I would look at the potential of can I sell it? What do you mean sell it? Many companies let you sell your unused sick leave, sick leave and vacation. Mm -hmm. I'd see if I could sell that. As well as I would even think about at my job, I would even inquire about some overtime, some bonus pay or incentives. And the final thing, and again, there's so many more things on my job. Look at your check stub. That's probably unnecessary deductions you haven't taken out. Look at that because your job has multiple ways. So one, I would negotiate the debt. Mm -hmm. And number two, I would look at my job. I think that's a starting point to address them. And there's several more things we can talk about also. Okay. So, yep. So for the person out there that was looking for a straightforward resolution, all right, just add into that because I know somebody's going to say there's a variety of other ways yeah, that you can yeah. tackle it as well, but that's going to lead for the average person to inaction. All right. Yeah. So a straightforward resolution. And I always use the example of think about the sensei, right? So they're saying anytime you're trying to master any kind of art, right? You get under a sensei, but you start off being underneath one. That's it. Master that. That's it. Then you go out and learn from others and then you go out and do your own thing, right? If you try to start off learning from a whole bunch of people all at once, it it's just gonna confuse you and it's not gonna work, yeah. all right? One more thing I wanna emphasize here. Um, they said few assets at this point, if it was you personally, would you even be worried about assets or would you just focus on negotiating the debt, all right, and, uh, the, and the, the resources you gave them on things they could do uh, yeah. on their job? Yeah, depending on the asset, JT, I could do one or two things. Mm -hmm. One, I could potentially sell, because when I think of an asset, it's something that's making me money. And I have mm -hmm. a feeling that this, what they're calling an asset, may not be making money. Mm -hmm. It may just be something of value. Like the primary residence. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So again, if, is this the one, the primary residence, is it paid off? Um, no, not, okay. not this one, yep. So on, on this one, I would not, if it's my primary residence, of course, I wouldn't touch that. now. Chances are, if your credit's bad, you can't refinance. I wouldn't do mm -hmm. that. Or what you could do, which is it's a distant second, though, you could potentially get a second mortgage through a hard money lender. That's not my op option. But depending on your equity, there's somebody out there that will loan you five or ten thousand dollars, a high interest rate against your primary house. So beware of that. But if you have a plan, you would need to have a written plan to get that second mortgage eradicated because we don't want you to lose your house. But that's a possible scenario because it is an asset or it has equity in it. Okay. All right. All right. We got another scenario. I think we can really fit two more in here okay. based okay. off of the time. All right. So like we said, we're going to give you guys as many answers as we can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in Monopoly, they have no consumer debt. Why do you have it? For $37 one-time investment, less than a pair of shoes, in 12 weeks, we can begin to eradicate your debt. Give us 12 weeks and we're going to reduce at least $500 a month of your debt. If Monopoly doesn't have consumer debt, why do you have it? $37, we can get you free. Begin today. God bless you. This scenario, somebody has a car from a divorce. Okay. Um, there are $9,000 past due on the car payment. Okay. Uh, they owe $13,000 total to pay off the car. The car is currently worth $5,000. This person also has bad credit. They okay. can't go get another loan uh, because of their credit. Okay. And they ask, what do they do? Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, on this situation, I take a slightly different approach to them. Uh, I'm assuming that th it's not their primary car. They're getting back and forth to work on. I'm making that assumption. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, again, let it go back. Now, think about it. I, I know, again, we believe if you've incurred the debt, you need to pay your debt responsibly. But if I have gone to the car dealership, the finance company, I explain to them, I got to walk in integrity. And if they tell me that's my problem, then I'm going to say to them, I'm sorry, people. So right now, I'm going to reach in my pocket <laughs> and I'm going to say, I don't want to do this, but here's your car back. Again, mm -hmm. you didn't work with me. I want to do what's right. 
I'm going to hand them the keys back and apologize. And what they're going to do, they're going to put a lien on your credit. But remember, mm -hmm. you've already told me your credit is jet. I mean, your credit's messed up. Mm -hmm. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get with a business consultant and I'm going to look at setting up an LLC and I'm going to look at simply building my business credit. See, mm -hmm. think a lot of people out there have terrible credit. But if you take the time to learn how to build your business credit, they're not leveraging my social. They're going to leverage or look at my paydex score. So I would encourage the person to do that. And of course, let's go back to the job situation. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming they work. Yep. So again, you can look at your job for the same thing we said before. Look at that check stub again. Can you change your withholding and get your refund in your paycheck? Mm -hmm. Can you get the overtime? Can you tap uh, shift differentials? And here's something else. Sometimes a person, JT, may have on their job something called a stock discount purchase, where let's say they work for Microsoft, mm -hmm. and instead of buying the stock for 100, they were able to get it for 80. Check to see if you have that type of plan, because you now can maybe sell those stocks if it's past the vesting period, and that's enough, another source of money. And here's one I'm not crazy about recommending, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. For a season, you may stop the contributions to your 401k. Now that pains me to say it if there's mm -hmm. a match. But if I'm putting in three, mm -hmm. and if I can stop that for a season, I just picked up another $300 a month, positive cash flow and or, and again, my final one, there's so many more, is you may can even borrow from your own 401k, just assume when you have one. So either stop contributing and or borrow from the one you have. And again, those are some general thoughts that I know would work, especially just simply returning it and building some credit through your LLC or your business enterprise. All right, so you know what? These We have more to do, but for the sake of time, Turn on post notifications, subscribe to the channel if you're new, continue to write your questions down uh, below. But we've tackled overwhelming debt, yeah. limited income, few assets, going through a divorce, having a car payment that has you underwater right now. And I think that that's a good start in putting a dent in you guys' personal financial yeah. problems that you want a solution for. And these are coming from somebody that has been there, done that, yes. as far as being yeah. a CPA has personal financial problems in the past go check out the video we did on this channel talking about fear and he even shared with us that he was in debt uh like over 40 grand at one point in time all right now in the next episode we're going to talk about uh evictions uh those of you that are afraid of that we're going to talk about disabilities we're going to talk about a whole lot of other things to help you work through your personal financial problems you don't want to miss the next episode on this playlist faith and finances so till next time so i'm hustling stay hustling jt automations i'm gone <laughs>